Hello, my name is Tony Botting, and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. In this video, we'll show a sample setup for a nonlinear yield simulation. I'll talk a little quickly because we need the video to be as short as possible, but you can always rewind and replay. We'll be forcing this part beyond the yield strength of the material using the nonlinear static analysis capability of Simulation Premium. The force here is 350 pounds, and the end is fixed. This image shows the first principal stress at full load. We'll unload the part as well and observe the residual deformation. One method you can use is the von Mises plasticity model with a bilinear stress strain curve. The bilinear stress strain curve shown here tells the software how the material behaves after it starts to yield. You can see the initial slope corresponds to the Young's modulus of the material up to the point where it starts to yield. The yield strength is assumed to be 36,000 psi after which it has a reduced stiffness and can strain more easily. This portion of the stress strain curve is called the tangent modulus. Okay, we'll define a new study and call it NL1. We'll click nonlinear and choose the static option. Now we'll access the properties of the study to specify solution options. I'm going to run the analysis over a two unit time interval. Here, the time is not real time, which you can read about here. Okay, now we'll look at the time increment. I'm going to leave the defaults here. The solver will attempt to adjust the step size to an optimum value. Next for geometric nonlinear options. I'll check the large displacement option and update the loading with the deflection. We don't anticipate large strain, so I won't check that. And we'll use the more general direct sparse solver for these types of problems. The advanced options have some settings for control method, iteration method, and integration procedure, which we'll leave at default. And I'll click OK. Now we'll set up the material behavior. I've defined a custom material here and pulled down the mathematical model type as plasticity von Mises. This is commonly used for metal yielding behavior and you can see there are many other types of math models for the material. You can see the correspondence of values in the dialog box to the stress strain curve shown earlier. Here's the elastic modulus, the yield strength, and the tangent modulus. There is an option to allow strain hardening but we won't use it here. Having defined the material, you can save, apply, and close. Now we'll apply a fixture at the end of the unit. And we'll specify the loading of 350 pounds. We'll go to the variation with time panel and specify a loading curve. We'll ramp up the load scaling value through the time interval to one unit, then at two units, ramp the load back down to zero. And you can see the loading curve up here. Okay, now we can set up the output controls. This is available so you can control the output information volume so as not to potentially fill the disk. We'll define edit, check the four specified solution steps option, and you can see the default here is 1000 steps with a disk write increment of every second step. However, neither the software nor us know how many steps the solver will take because of the automatic stepping option we applied in the properties of the study, but we can take a guess. It probably won't be more than 100, and we'll tell it to write results to disk every step increment. Now we'll go to the response plots or graphs settings. This is handy if you had set up sensors at predefined locations, but we won't use it at this time. Let's proceed to mesh. For our first cut, I'll use a coarse mesh and a draft quality element. This helps to solve faster and provides an indication of how many steps will be taken and give a rough estimate of solution times to expect. Following that, you can mesh it with high quality elements and a smaller average element size. During the run, you can see the total solution time interval, the current solution time, and the step size that's being used and adjusted automatically. At the top, it also shows the step number. I have some results from a study done earlier with a finer mesh, so we'll take a look. First, we'll look at von Mises stress over the entire loading history in an animation. You can see a lot of red indicating areas that might be yielding. Let's plot the P3 component of stress at maximum load value, which is time equal to one second corresponding to step seven. Notice the legend shows compressive stress well past yield at the fixed corner. I'll develop a graph of the stress at two locations. And press the response button. 
You can see the stress shown on the red line corresponding to the fixed corner exceeds the yield strength of 36 KSI in compression. The blue line shows an area on the inside of the structure which ends up slightly in tension when the load is removed. We'll show a displacement plot after the load is removed too to look for residual deflection and a probe on the loading face. You can see there is some permanent set after the load is removed. The end face remains at about 100 thousandths of an inch. Here's a sample workflow for metal yielding. Go ahead and take a screenshot and you'll be good to go. In this video, we've shown a sample setup for a nonlinear yield simulation. 